So what's the next one? 2 cosine x times sine x minus cosine x. Minus cosine x? Mm -hmm. Equals 0. Um, so we factor that out first. Um, when you're factoring out the cosine x, can you, I'm just, I don't know, why is it 2 sine x minus 1? Um, I'm going to factor a cosine out of here and a cosine out of there, right? Yeah. So when I divide cosine out of this thing, what's left behind? Oh, just a 1 cosine? It's, that 2 is left behind and the sine is left behind when I divide this one by cosine, right? And then when I divide this one by cosine, what's negative cosine divided by cosine? Negative cosine. This is what I'm saying. Negative, negative cosine divided by cosine. Oh, negative one. That's negative one. That's where that negative one comes from. And now I'm going to set them equal to zero separately. And when you divide by two cosine divided by cosine, it's just the cosines cancel out and it's just two left over? Mm-hmm. Okay. So do you understand how I got those that in that parenthesis now? Mm -hmm. um, so this would be and and then this one would be. If I have, since it's cosine x equals zero and then sine x equals one half, mm -hmm. um, do I can I put all of the, the equal in one x with the little squiggles, or uh, do I have to do two separate x equals? Uh, no. You, if you were doing like the set, mm -hmm. the set for the answer would be pi over two, three pi over two, pi over six, and five pi over six. That's the whole set. That doesn't have to be in any sort of order. I can do it wherever I want. I mean, normally they put them in um, least to greatest, right. so that pi over 6 would have to be moved here. Mm -hmm. And then the 5 pi over 3 would be between these two. Or the 5 pi over 6 would be between those two. But yeah. and I don't think it really matters. I don't think anybody's going to count it wrong. I don't think your teacher's going to count it wrong as long as you have all four. Yeah.